Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Existence Podcast, episode 24, joined by myself, Nick Peach Pies, Brayden, Kyle, also known as Kesos, Sandman, TS1, and Mr. Vanilla Raccoon. How are you guys all doing today? Good. How about you? <laughs> Content. I'm not too bad. It's a nice, nice Sunday morning for me at the moment. Um, we've got a few things to talk about this podcast. Uh, last podcast went very well and we got some really good feedback on that. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you guys for all that support there. This podcast, we've got a few topics that um, specific vanilla has a lot to do with. But also we've got Kyle, um, who we talked briefly about last time in the podcast. And also we've got 1.15 snapshots has been a very, very recent aspect of the Minecrafting world. But um what do we want to talk about first? Do we want to talk about the 1.15 stuff? Or do we want to talk about some great odysseys that have happened and are going to happen? Well, I think for starters, we should uh, define what a great odyssey is. <laughs> Can you please define that for us? Yeah, go on, Vanilla. I love your definitions of things because they always make interesting amounts of sense. Uh, okay. Um, that's the first. So, <clears throat> when I first coined this saying, I thought, oh, <laughs> are we going to have to bring back the extraordinarily humble <laughs> meme again? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no. So, I first thought, you know, Odyssey, the Greek um, mythological story, you know, Odysseus. And how he had to go on it and on a uh, adventure, and I was like, uh -huh. "Oh, that's cool! Adventure, Odyssey, it's great." So that's that. Excellent oh. story. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, I would just go, "Okay, an Odyssey, it's a journey or a voyage." That, that would have worked too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Odyssey is a here. This is what Google tells me, or yourdictionary.com, my personal dictionary.com, I should say, um, is a Greek epic poem written by Homer about a long journey of a man named what you said. How do you say that? Odysseus. Odysseus. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, or a long we or American eventual journey or experience. Odyssey. <laughs> a spiritual quest is an example of an Odyssey. Oh, that's a lot more deep and meaningful than I thought. I was, I was literally saying, okay, an odyssey is just another word for a journey. But that'll do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, um, Vanilla, we'll start off with you, I guess. You have some big plans for the end of the year that you've been kind of teasing at in the podcast every now and again, and a few of us know kind of what's happening. But would you like to kind of let everyone know what's what your plan is? Okay, so... Um... <clears throat> in December of 2017, the year of the pig, hence why I say 2017, uh, I'm going to Sweden. Nice. And uh, it's going to be my greatest odyssey at that. Have you gone like any further than Sweden before? I have not. So the far the farthest I've gone is to Seattle, Washington. Mind you, I'm from Philly. So uh, Philly, PA, all that. Um, I don't know the, how relatively far away from either of those places they are. I'm looking. I'm literally going right from the East Coast to the West Coast. Oh wow! Oh okay, that's a yeah quite a distance. It was it was a six hour flight. I was oh, so bored and so tired. Anyways, so. This coming December. Kyle, your chair. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not move. <laughs> your chair, dude. Oh my God. Oh okay, gosh. so I'm going to Sweden. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I should get there by Thursday. Because apparently I'm, when you go across the pond and beyond England, you skip a day or something. Um, yeah, you'll... Yeah, you'll jump quite a few hours, I think. So, yeah, you kind of time travel. And I love that about traveling like to different countries and stuff. You literally time travel. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I was, uh, I, I'm going to interrupt. I was talking to one of my friends I play uh, games with in the Netherlands, and he was talking about uh, flying to Vancouver. And I was, uh, mm. I, I figured it out. And you actually travel faster than the speed of sound when you fly, fly to Vancouver <laughs> from the Netherlands. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's insane. <laughs> anyway, but then you go really slow on the way home. Science. <laughs> nice. So I get there Thursday. I'm going to walk around Stockholm, well, drive around Stockholm. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to be renting a car. Uh, and then Friday, I'm going to be meeting up with someone. Mm-hmm. And then we are going to travel only. And when you put the word only in front of a big number, it's not that bad, mind you. <laughs> We're going to travel only 10 hours north. Close to the, yep, close to okay. the Arctic Circle <clears throat> to a place called Lule. And uh, we're going to be trying to see the Northern Lights. Is this the place you were telling me about like a while ago and it's like negative 30 in winter or something? Like yes. Celsius? Yes. That's what yes. it is here. Yes. yes. Is it actually Kyle? Oh, nuts. Hey, well, last year there was like two weeks where it was negative 30 every day. Oh my yes. gosh. That's... You oh, you dear. better pack very warmly, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, you need your thermal oh, underwear. You will freeze. Oh, oh, I'm I'm ready for this. I've been taking cold showers, cold baths, all that jazz. <laughs> but so um, anyway, so jazz. Saturday hey, having hot mm. jazz, topical because bees. <laughs> so Saturday <laughs> is going to be my day, snowmobiling, driving across frozen lake, all that jazz. Fun. Sunday is going to be her day. Um, mm-hmm. we, have, we have several options. Either we can go uh, dog sledding alone, 12 hours. Oh dog, sled. Or, dog sledding. Or we can do a short course, guided dog sledding. Um. Hmm. I mean, if you've never been dog sledding before, it might be a good idea to go with the toured one. <laughs> it's hit or miss because that's the one thing that's up in the air. Like, you have to get lucky. You show up, hey, I want to go dog sledding. Oh, we have spots available. Cool. Or we don't have spots available. But then again, the second option, you can visit the dog kennel and play with the dogs. Oh. <gasps> and it's like, can't, oh, can't cool. Both? Um, no. Why not both? <laughs> it's like go dog sledding and then play with the dogs afterwards. You could do both, but unfortunately, there's like bark, bark. Yeah, I'm gonna close my. Door. I know, right? Like, bark. <laughs> someone wants to go dog sledding. <laughs> as long as, like, if you do the twelve hour one, you got to promise me one thing: it doesn't turn into one of those horror thriller movies where you get stuck in the snow and have to eat the dogs. I just came back eating to hearing about eating dogs. What, what did I miss? <laughs> I'm just saying right now, um, <clears throat> I saw twice in in uh, theaters a film called Midsommar. And, oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. Sweden, take your time. <laughs> December, take your time. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But no, so like. You can either show up and do the dog sledding and the kennel, or you can show up and be like, oh, no spots available for the dog sledding, but we do have spots available for the kennel. So that's uh, her thing. So I see one way or another, you're going to get to play with dogs. Yes. That's, yeah. a, and that's then a tip by me. I approve. And then afterwards, Monday, uh, we come back to Stockholm, and then we say our goodbyes. Mm-hmm. T- Tuesday, I leave Stockholm, Sweden, come back home to the States. And that's so how it. long are you gone for? About a week. Oh, yeah. That's a solid trip. I don't know how you can afford it. Lift pays well. Yeah. <laughs> I Maybe I should start. How much, how much lift pays? <laughs> I like because you seem to go on all of these uh, trips and stuff like that all over the world, and it's like, dude, how do you know? And, you know, being a well, the, driver and a YouTuber, and it's like, oh, to be I, fair, he was like, this is his first trip out of the states. Am I right in saying that, Nilla? Yes, this is my oh, first this, trip oh, okay. out I of you the had, states. Okay, my bad. 
I mean, I, 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 I must say, Sam, and I have to agree with you. It does, you know, it is, um, it kind of, you get that impression that vanilla travels around the whole world, but because yeah. you travel around the States, vanilla, right? Like recently, over the past so, couple of years. I, I mean, doing Mindfair. Mm. So because of Mindfair, as I put it to my writers, uh, ever writers? since. Writers, R I D E R E S. What is. I thought you said writers, but now I'm still confused. What is a rider? The people Person. who ride in his car when he does lift. The people that oh. he taxis around. Oh, yeah. Yep, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I was <laughs> <laughs> so confused. So as I put it uh, quite recently, actually. Um, so ever since last autumn, I've been traveling around the country for a convention mm. called Mindfair for a game called Minecraft. And people mm. generally well, this go. This is Minecraft. And people generally go, oh, I know that game. Oh, my son plays that. Oh, my daughter plays that. Oh, they probably watch you. I'm like, I'm just sitting at roughly 2,030 subscribers. And then um, they call you a big nerd and slam the door as they leave. Big nerd. Yes. <laughs> 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 but no, so I say like, you know, in September, I was in Chicago. October, mm. the D.C. area. The following weekend, I was in the Oaks, PA area, which is pretty much Philly's background. Uh, January this year, I was in San Diego, beautiful place. March, I was in Dallas, Texas. And then May, Seattle, Washington, very, very beautiful place. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to take the I wanted to take the summer off from traveling. Yeah, because I'm just so tired from traveling. Uh, but then sweden happened and i'm like oh okay <laughs> i definitely think like of all because i people always ask me you know and it's kind of a, a, a typical thing to ask people when you're trying to like i don't know get to, i just realized that kyle changed his nickname to big nerd <laughs> 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 um but like i've i've never really kind of had much um I guess interest, I should say, and like kind of traveling overseas, never really knew like any places I'd kind of want to go. And then I think it was Telks um, of all people who tweeted out about like kind of places to go. And, um, I think I kind of came up with what did I say? I think I said Canada for starters. That's a, that's oh. a good one. Yeah, Canada. Uh, oh, Canada. Hey, Patrick, you can uh, come live in the basement with me. Oh, absolutely, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. But um, I think I definitely want to go to Canada because I like that kind of, I guess that kind of place from you know typical Canada image. Don't come in. The um, <laughs> and um, I think Iceland. It's definitely kind of a cool place to go. I think Kellen, my brother, um, wanted to go to Iceland as well. Definitely, it's a photography kind of hotspot as well. And um, yeah, no, Sweden definitely. I I really kind of think Sweden would be kind of a place I would enjoy, but. I've never really thought too much about traveling overseas. I remember a few years back when I was working and I was um, like, you know, working and had money and had like no other commitments. I was so ready for like a new mine con and I was so fully like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go overseas and go to the mine con and la 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 la. And then mine con died. Earth happened. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's now mine con. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's, my, it's Minecraft Live. Yeah. But when they first said it was Minecraft, no, Minecraft. <laughs> and that kind of sucked. But, um. Severe downgrade. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm still kind of traveling locally, which is still kind of good. It's just tricky now that I kind of have to travel within the bounds of my, um, like term and semester breaks. So, like, I think my last big trip was when I went up to Auckland, started 2018, and made my little kind of short vloggy video thing about it. Uh, I haven't really done anything since then, apart from kind of traveling to Dunedin and then kind of back home during the holidays and stuff like that. But I'm doing a bit more of a, or well, planning anyway, a bit more of a kind of more intricate trip next holidays where I'm going to fly from Dunedin at the bottom of the country to Auckland at the top of the country for... um. You all might be familiar with the name Tommy Thirty Nine. Oh, it's it's Tommy. I I remember it's I his named birthday. my camera account after yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Tommy. So Tommy Thirty Nine is is um iconic on my channel and also known within existence as my camera account. Um, but yeah, he he's having his twenty first. I've just had my twenty first, and he's next. So I'm flying up 
for his 21st in October, start of October. That'd be cool. Yeah, and then I'm going to kind of hop, skip, and jump on my way back down to Dunedin via my hometown Better and then possibly via Christchurch to see kind of some family members and then back to Dunedin. Which is funny because, like last holidays, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to stay in Dunedin next holidays, you know, just live there for a bit and hang out with people down here. And now all of a sudden I'm going on like a possibly a week long jump around the country. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. But, um, I don't mind it. I like it. I like flying. And lots of people don't. Because I think you were asking me kind of like about getting nervous about trips and stuff. And I mean, absolutely. Especially kind of when in this case where I'm going to somewhere I'm not really familiar with. So to touch on that real quick. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Drug <throat> drive. Uh, <clears throat> it's a little warm here in Philly. Um, so. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. I mean, anxious. I would be. I'm a bit anxious and nervous about going to a whole new country. It, it's not like I'm going to another part of the States. It's mm. I'm traveling abroad. And so uh, one thing I wanted to ask the listeners was, like, if you've traveled abroad, uh, how did you overcome that? The anxiousness, the nervousness, or any fears or whatever because i've been watching a lot of videos on youtube um discussing like the do's and don'ts what you should know what you should not know about sweden and i'm just like uh what am i signing up for here yeah and plus i, I know that um you're clearly kind of keeping certain aspects um out of the public eye which is perfectly fine but Obviously, I'm aware of kind of who you're going to meet. And in that sense, um, if you don't mind me saying, like, um, there's someone like that you you know, but you haven't necessarily met. Is that fair to say? If that's yes. something that you want to talk about or just touch on. Um, I was just because, like, obviously, with my, my trip at the start of last year, I went and met Tom and um, another friend, Mara, who I know through Tom as well. Um, and I'd, I'd known them for years and years and years, but never actually met them because I know them from online. Um, and I mean, that definitely was, I think probably one of the more nerve breaking things was kind of meeting someone that I've known for so long, but never actually met. I, I can relate to this big time. Yeah, I know. I was just going to bring that up next, Kyle. <laughs> so... How do you feel about that? And looks like I know that like I was definitely anxious, but because I know them so well, and I think that'd be fair to say you you definitely know the person pretty well. Um, it's still, you know, it kind of feels it's a strange feeling, but it kind of feels normal. Like it doesn't feel out of the ordinary. So this year I've met so many online mates who have actually come to Philly for business purposes. And I took mm. them around the town. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of used to like meeting up with someone who I met online mm. and have known yeah, for that's a good while. Uh, for example, like two piggles, uh, a few others. Um, <laughs> however, this person, it's going to be different because uh, we talked about some stuff over the summer and that's where the uh, that's where the <laughs> undocu that's where the document of signing comes into play the oh i see the nda <laughs> i'm the still word we banned you from using <laughs> yep <laughs> Yeah, but no, that's it, fair. Like, I, I, I definitely get that. You know, um, I assume you're saying because you know, you know, someone and you talk about things, and and um, you're meeting them in real life. Kind of like, where do you stand on certain aspects? And that's fair to say. Like, yeah. I definitely with with Tommy. Like, um, you know, we we're very close, like really, really close friends now. And even before I met him, like, we'd have some pretty like depth in depth conversations. Cause obviously, I've known Tommy since like 2013 and you know as some of you be aware Kyle in specific who's known me for a while you know some I've been through some pretty bad patches over the past couple of years and you know Tommy helped me with quite a f few of those kind of patches so definitely he kind of 
knew a lot about me and I knew a lot about him. Mm-hmm. And um, it was kind of like, well, where do you stand on that? But it was just normal in the end of the day because we were so close already and just meeting each other in person was just kind of like the same, same, but different. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but like I said, um, Kyle, yeah. if we want to segue into this. I, I went on a bit of a trip this summer. Yeah, because we, we touched on it last podcast, but oh my gosh, your chair. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to move as little as possible to, <laughs> so to roll funny. my chair. <laughs> but, oh gosh. But yes, last podcast, we, we, we vaguely touched on it because I think it was happening at the time of the recording. Um, Probably. We you, left on the 26th. Yeah, that'd be about right. Because it was you, ACG 1000, Delta Dragon, and I believe you also met up with ATM, was it? Yes. Yeah, ATM2222, one of the uh, the great patrons. So, um, uh, yeah, okay, tell us okay. about that. I'll just uh, tell the story from the beginning. So uh, last year, there was this computer hardware event called LTX, and uh, I really wanted to go. It's about a 12-hour drive from my house, so I uh, mm. I didn't go, but I really wanted to. And then uh, I jokingly said, hey, let's all go to LTX next year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone actually took me seriously, and it, it kind of happened. <laughs> So basically, awesome. uh, Dragon flew to my house two days before the event. Yep. ACG flew to ATM's house, which is in Oregon. So uh, mm. ACG's in, in uh, California. He flew to Oregon. And then they uh, they drove up. And then we drove, me and Dragon, drove from Calgary to Vancouver, which is about 12 hours. Yep. Then we uh, did LTX for the weekend, all four of us. Then uh, me, Dragon, and ACG drove back to my house on the Monday. Mm. And we did fun stuff around where I live for a whole week, and it, it was amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. I love because there's, uh, let me think. There's your you and you guys walking up what thirty two flights of stairs or something. Yeah, it was it was thirty four, and that was. I don't know why <laughs> I recorded that, but I'm kind of happy I did because everyone apparently liked it. I love it, and then um, I think I'm trying to remember now. Did you have like a vloggy video? Yeah, I had a, a hiking video and then ACG yeah. had two videos. Yeah, and one of them was cooking with Kyle, which I absolutely loved. Yeah. I love you guys um putting the gummy bears. <laughs> was it gummy bears? Yeah. So we went uh camping for two days and that was while we were camping and uh Dragon was having a nap, so we did that while he was having a nap. A real? Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh gosh. That sounds like awesome. Like it sucks that I live so far away from everyone. It, it really does. Like it would have been just like it would have been so cool. Yeah, like the closest I think did we talk about last podcast? I think we did, because we were touching on like meeting people and such. And like the closest people I probably live to would be Pineapple, as we mentioned last podcast. And I guess like in that sense I'd have to go to like Hawaii and see Miles past member miles and other than that like i guess i just have to go to pretty much just to the states i think that'd be closer than europe i don't even know but so, everywhere's just so far away from me yeah, <laughs> so i recently close. had a dream that uh past existence members and current existence members uh met up in europe <clears throat> for a meetup mm. it might happen you never know Mm-hmm. I know that like um, communities like Game Mode Four, for example, they've currently got a meetup planned. Yeah, I saw that. That's really in cool. Amsterdam, yeah, it's I think a, it's in Amsterdam. A, yeah, yeah, they've done a couple of them before, and like that is such a cool idea. But luckily, <laughs> a lot of the Game Mode Four community is from the European or British area. Now that they're separate. I mean, um, I'm going to Amsterdam next year to meet up with some YouTubers, so, eh. <laughs> nice. But, um, because next year we will be coming up on, goodness me, four years of existence. Ooh. And I, I kind of jokingly talked about, I think it was last podcast, I kind of jokingly talked about for the fifth year we should have, like, a international meetup. That would be amazing. That would be incredible, see, assuming this- that I haven't died from... <laughs> exhaustion by the- <laughs> this is how the talk of our uh, trip to ltx happened it was completely jokingly and then we just mm. kept talking about it until someone was like looking at plane tickets and they're like oh yeah we could actually do this yeah no absolutely and that's 
kind of how my initial trip with with Tom went back at the start of last year was kind of like you should totally come up and just come to Auckland and come see us. And then, you know, next thing I know, I'm looking at plane tickets and I've booked them. Just and it and I think it kind of comes back to it, you know, it's like you know these people for so long, it just it's it's normal. Like there's no you don't really need to think about it too much. It's just kind of do it. Oh, Kyle, my gosh, you're cheating. I moved like an inch, okay? <laughs> I know. It's going to be so iconic. All hail the squeaky book. chair. <laughs> Big nerd in his squeaky chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. But yeah, what about you, Sam? And do you travel much at all? Because I know you're, you're working a lot, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a homebody. <laughs> I really don't travel that much. I recently traveled out of state for work um, across. Uh, across the uh the lake um because i'm over in uh, michigan um mm. I, I reside in a small town um uh kind of in like the mid michigan lower um peninsula area um and i went over to wisconsin across lake michigan and uh went okay. over there for work which was about a nine nine and a half hour drive um <clears throat> the way i took so um i ended up going oh, up wow. the scenic I ended up going up the scenic uh, route, um, across the bridge up into the Upper Peninsula near Canada, Canada and uh, oh, nice. just um, pretty much took. Uh, there's this interstate that kind of just followed the contour of the lake all the way down through Wisconsin down to Green Bay, and then I took that across over to where I needed to go. So that sounds that, awesome. Yeah, it was it was a really nice drive. Um, the way back was kind of tough. Um, it didn't take, it didn't feel like it was that long, but um, just sitting in the car for nine hours, you get stiff. And <laughs> I, I, yeah. I got to get out of stretch. Because so how long was your drive for LTX, Kyle? It was 12 hours, and we drove there on oh, Friday what? and back on Monday. Oh, I didn't realize it was that long. I thought it was like eight hours or something. It was but 12. 12, yeah. Oh well, my the, gosh, and you took your your car your uh, i drove a... i drove my dad's van cuz uh oh, okay we we couldn't fit three yeah. people in my mini <laughs> the good thing right. about having uh multiple people though on a trip is that you guys if assuming that all of you can drive you can each take turns driving you're still in the car but for me i was completely by myself oh, wow. um so that that's kind of tough yeah i feel like that also yeah. get kind of lonely you just you know you have people to talk to when you're driving with other people yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I called my parents a couple times on the way over there and talked to them for a while. But yeah, it, <laughs> it kind of gets a little bit lonely after a while. But, you know, got to do what you got to yeah. do. But no, other than that, I, I really don't travel that much. I would, I would like to travel, but I just I I don't have the time nor the uh, the funds to do so at the moment. Yeah, no, that's fair. Like, it's kind of like I really like I, I wouldn't mind traveling more and going to other places and seeing family and all that kind of stuff, but it's just like it gets so expensive at, at a certain point, and also just trying to fit in during the year. Like, when do you do all this stuff? And then you know you got to book everything so early because it's cheaper, and then you know you got to rely on other people to be free and available at certain times, and it's right. like, oh, yeah, I'll just and, stay here then. <laughs> yeah, and especially just getting a um, a dog here in April. You know, there's really oh true. Yeah, there, there's really like if I'm going to go on like a week long trip or something, I got to find somebody to to watch Kato because I can't take her with me. Um, mm. So I, w I was gone over in Wisconsin for four days and fortunately my parents were able to watch her. But, you know, if, if I'm if I'm going on a trip and they're not around, you know, then I have to go and border somewhere and that's even more money and that's not cheap. So, yeah um it, it's kind of a pain in the butt yeah, but, you know. yeah definitely having kind of pets and stuff because i know like my parents when they'd go away because we've got a dog we, we got many animals three cats and a dog and we did have a guinea pig and many many animals in the past but like luckily we're fortunate enough that, like our neighbors or like friends could just like feed our cats because they kind of just mm -hmm. roam but the dog like would have to either take with us which we did sometimes or um like put her in the kennels and she, to be fair she did love the kennels she she's a very social dog so she loves yeah. other dogs but um yeah, yeah Kato's I, the it, exact same way she's very uh, social. Kato sounds like the best dog i love Kato. 
Yeah, no, she's she's amazing. She, um, if you guys don't know, um, any of you listeners, she's a uh, seven month old. She's gonna be eight months here in September twelfth, but she's a uh, seven month old purebred German Shepherd, and oh she's gosh. just absolutely amazing. Just the most amazing dog, once in a lifetime dog. Um, yeah, I've seen a couple uh, pictures of her, and she looks adorable. Yeah, she's laying here right next to me sleeping. So, um, <laughs> she heard her name, so she's awake now. But, um, but she's laying right. <laughs> my desk right now but yeah she's just absolutely amazing and like if i was going camping if i went up in the up which is um a lot of uh camping spots up there um closer near the um the uh u.s uh canada border um then i'd probably take her with me but going like going overseas or you know whatever i or even going across the country or somewhere yeah um, then i i can't take just yeah, just something that can't really do. Yep. Yeah, it's fair. Um, yeah. I don't know. Brayden's been awfully quiet. Are you still here, Brayden? Yeah, I'm here. I just don't really have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you travel too much, Brayden, do you? No. You get around. You just kind of. No. The last time I like went on vacation was like two years ago, I think. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in a similar, similar boat. With before my LTX trip, like last time I've been on a plane was in uh, 2011. It was the only oh, wow. time, Jeez. but uh, like I don't travel much, which is what made this trip like even more fun. It's, uh, yeah, sure. There's a lot of new stuff. I mean, like before last year, I had been in a plane like I think I've been on two trips that involve planes. Um, but then last year I flew more times than I did for like the rest of my life. Oh wow! Because <laughs> I went. I went on three trips that involved planes because first I went to Auckland and Waikiki Island and all that, and then I went to Dunedin twice during the year. So last year was a lot of traveling, relatively speaking, and then this year I've kind of been forced to travel just because, obviously, because I'm so far away from home and all that, and traveling just back home for the whole day is just there's no other way really than to fly. But other than that, yeah, no, it's kind of weird how all of a sudden there's just been a shift and now all of a sudden I'm traveling all the time, relatively speaking. But, um, yeah, that there's a lot going on with everyone's traveling, but coming back, I guess, to where we're at of everything else, playing Minecraft and all that, did we want to kind of talk about the chunky bees <laughs> yeah let's talk about those chunky bees why don't we to be smaller <laughs> yeah i I, I, mentioned this, it, I mentioned this it, on twitter they they i think they need to be smaller in my opinion yeah. i think they're too big you know i think they should yeah. be bigger and they should uh be like a new boss <laughs> Ka- he, case or you don't know what you're so, talking about no but they would actually okay so just have a ender bee for any, like a- <laughs> anyone who who um lives under a rock um or just doesn't pay much attention to Minecraft updates, which is fair. Um, they added bees in the latest snapshot, which I'm actually glad that the snapshot's out so quickly because, you know, if you look at past uh, releases with 1.14, 1.13, um, like there's been so many like giant delays, not delays in series, but gaps between updates. It's good to mm-hmm. finally see, you know, a nice quick turnaround time, kind of keep things yeah. fresh. Um. But yeah, no, they added bees and honey and hives and nests, bee nests, which is interesting. Um, I would have just both called them beehives. But yeah, I mean, I've, I haven't played it. I've only just watched videos about it, but Sandman, I think you played it? Yeah, I, I played around with it a little bit when it came out, and uh, it's definitely going to take time getting used to the AI of the bees, and I, I think I have them pretty much down. Um, I know I watched... Um, Exuma's uh kind of like uh what is it called his snapshot um mm. like his snapshot videos going over like a spotlight whatever yeah um so yeah I I I like the uh the new update I think the AI still needs I I don't think the bees AI is fully developed yet I don't think it's nah. like everything's in there yet um I think they just touched on a little bit of what's gonna happen but. Um, the AI looked really derpy from the videos I saw. They yeah. kind of just yeah, buzz around with not much direction. Right, yeah. They kind of just go off um, in just random uh, directions or something like that. Find a flower, kind of hover over it a little bit. And 
Um, I'm not really exactly sure, you know, what their AI, like what the steps are, um, because I know mm. they go out and they find a flower and in quotes pollinate it. And then um, I'm not really sure exactly how many flowers they have to go visit. Um, and then they go back to the hive or um, the nest or, or whatever. So I, I really don't know the back end very well of it but i did play around with it it's it seemed it's a really nice addition uh to the game i know we definitely need a lot more mobs especially more neutral mobs and a lot more passive mobs too um so i'm i'm really looking forward to the future of what they they have planned but i the one (laughs) the one little nitpick that i have with this uh with this snapshot, is I just think the bees are too big. I just, yeah. I mean, but yep. I, I mentioned this on Twitter though, and there I can't remember the um, the person who I think um, it was said this. I Galaxy. It it could be I Galaxy. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the tweet now. Yeah, I'm I'm pulling it up too. Um, oh no, it was Duo. No, it was it was Duo. Yeah, he was supposed to be in the uh, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, today, but, he um, wasn't invited, but unfortunately, I'm not able to. Yeah, um, know. but. <laughs> He replied back saying that um, if you're in a world where there are two meter wide spiders, you know, then <laughs> I'm fine with chonker bees. Chonker like, bees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, an that, that's a good point. That, 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 that's a good point because yeah. I, I think if you want to make sense of all of it, if you make the bees smaller, then you're going to have to make the spider smaller. So, um, touche, yeah. you know, touche to him. I like yeah. how uh, the bees are bigger than the baby sea turtles. So. <laughs> are they really? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little weird. Oh no, I I think I I definitely get what Duo said there in that tweet, but I just think the bees look so they're too big. stupid. They, they just look, look pretty so, clumsy, in my opinion. They do. Like so. bees are meant to be fast and agile and meant to be like in groups and swarms and that yeah, kind of stuff. They just, they're like just compare them to the parrots. Like honestly, that's all you need to do. Yeah, that that's just yeah. yeah you know, but, I, I just think they need to be uh, a little bit more vers- uh, versatile, a little bit smaller. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, well, and just make you know them as the same size of the baby bees. Which, which I, which I, I did just mention this. The baby bees. Yeah, which I did mention Wait, this. Baby my, bees. Yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, you can breed them. Oh, yeah, no, I, I would just make it the from flowers bees. or something. What? Don't you like breathe them with flowers? Oh, yeah. yeah, you breathe yeah. them with flowers, yeah. But mm. I mentioned this in my um Twitter post about this. Um, because if you want to be realistic to the real world, there's no mm. such thing as baby bees. They there's larva, um, yeah, which they get um bred into the um the actual nest and they grow into the actual bee itself. Mm. So my solution was to actually make the baby bee model the adult bee and then maybe add like larva or something or just have um just bees kind of just have spawn. It, you know? Like once you breed the bees, they go into the nest and then after a while a new bee would come out. Yeah, after like, like a, yeah, after a certain amount of like gain ticks or something, a new yeah. bee comes out. So um yeah. You know, I, I think that would be a little bit more realistic to the whole B, you know, the anatomy or whatever. So um, that's what I would have done, but I can't complain. So um, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. I've been wanting more mobs in the game. So and we got bees. So, yeah, uh, I I think just yeah, just a little bit smaller. would be yeah, a little bit smaller. <clears throat> I think they're a little bit too big. Um, if you want to go big. Maybe just a little, maybe a couple pixels smaller, but mm. I think they're a little bit too big and too clumsy. Yeah, well, it's only the first snapshot, and a lot yeah, of people are like exactly to make them smaller. So I'm thinking they probably will. Yeah, and you I'm, can always I'm go sure in like, um, and you can always do custom models too later down the road when the official release comes out. You can because I know Germsy Boy does this; he changes the models up on mobs, and you can always make a smaller version. But the only downside is that you need Optifine to do that. But yeah, you you can always go in when Optifine com- comes out for one dot fifteen and make smaller bees. So it's it's you know it's not that big of a deal. It's not like it's you know permanent. 
Yeah. Um, but... Vanilla's just seen a seen a post in um, the Discord here in regards to kind of the um, the name changing. I mentioned very briefly about the bee nest and all that. And um, he's in a post, and I didn't realize that we'd both been sent it respectively by the same person. But Noah, <laughs> of all people, um, sent a post on Reddit and the Minecraft suggestions, I think it was. Yep. Um, Nilla, would you like to update us okay, on that? So, coming from an agricultural high school background and <laughs> also studying bees. And, I just wanted uh, you to read the post. <laughs> up. Uh, so former existent member Noah made a post on the Reddit slash feedback Minecraft saying, change the names of beehive slash bee nest to apiary slash beehive respectively. The names for the beehives and bee nests are unclear and you should be renamed so that a naturally spawning bee nest should be called a beehive and a man-made mm. beehive should be called an apiary. Yeah. I yeah, like that. Makes that a lot, a lot more. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. And that, that goes back to my point when saying that, you know, let's make it more of a realistic um, aspect instead of, you know, because there's gotta be a little bit of some fantasy in, in the game, but it, it makes a lot more sense. And that's what the actual real, you know, realistic um, terms are. So I, mm-hmm. I, th- I think that should be it. But like I said, with texture packs, you can change the names as well. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of good yeah. discussion here from a few different people. I'm just looking on the Reddit post now. People are saying like, this is an accurate bee nest. So the proper names for wild bee homes and beehives are the names of human made ones, which, which makes sense. And then some people are like, um, your current names are actually correct. Hives are man-made nests aren't. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, there's some. I think there's kind of reasoning for both sides here, but I, I mean, it's just a name. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be bothered if they didn't change it. But mm. it would be nice. record every time someone says B, I'm thinking two E's. <laughs> every time I think of B, I think of the B movie, which makes me think of Seinfeld. You like <laughs> jazz? <laughs> Speaking of the B movie, did you see that post on the Minecraft subreddit where yes. someone made a text? Yes, I saw it on, I on, saw Twitter. on Twitter. I think I saw the amazing. original post. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um I, I really want to link all these sources. I'm definitely gonna forget to. But um yeah, I saw that. That's great. But um coming back to, to bee puns and also the bees themselves and how Sam Man was bitching larvae and stuff. So um, Game Mode 4 actually, for a long time, for I think they put in about 10 hours of development into a B module <laughs> for 1.14. They'd done about, I think, five different live streams of them developing a module purely based around honeybees, and then the snapshot came out. <laughs> Perfect. Darn. Time. Yeah, so I kind of suggested to them, maybe, like, maybe just wrap it up and kind of get it out there and... Um, you know, it could be bees in 1.14, but um, that's really unfortunate. It is. Yeah. But I was going to say, you don't have to wait they... for 1.15 because it's 1.14. Here we are, bees. Exactly. <laughs> but I was going to mention the way that they handled doing the the physical bees in the game is they, um, obviously because it's data packs, it's all vanilla. So they had invisible vexes holding a custom player head. Because you know how Vex is everything they hold is smaller yeah. and tiny, yeah. And obviously they fly around as well. So I reckon like that kind of, I mean, I, it's kind of hard to imagine, but if you imagine a small little square <laughs> flying around, that's how they handle the bees. And I think they should be kind of that I think the kind bees of. Size. Are, I think the bees in the snapshot are bigger than the vexes, I believe. Yeah, they are probably. Yeah, yeah. I think the I bees are the bigger than bigger. For they're sure. Probably bigger than like I'm trying. They're, they're huge because they're like the size of a player head, if not bigger. I think they're bigger. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're just a tiny bit smaller by like one pixel. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. in that in the module that they were developing, um, I think bees started as larvae. Like you'd get larvae, lava, however you mean to say it, from like you'd you'd find them in bushes and trees and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure, and then you could put them into a. a um, into like a nest or a hive, which I think was like a barrel with custom data and all that kind of stuff, and then they would grow into bees. Yep. 
And I think that's kind of a really cool way. And like, I think we need some different kind of way, like turtle, when turtles were added, they kind of added up a little bit of difference there with turtle eggs and all that kind of stuff. Instead right. of just the standard Minecraft, give two mobs a certain item and they'll make a baby one. Right. I think definitely yeah. having like some sort of process, more interesting process. Yeah. 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 And I think that's what they should be doing with the bees here. Um, mm. Because that's, you, you can't just go and give bees two things and let them mm. have fun and you get more bees. No, it's <laughs> no, there's a, there's a process. There's stages of life that, you know, need to, you know, develop. So I think they should really, you know, um, add that kind of change the things up yeah. yeah i think the bees are very complex little bugs and i think definitely they there's are. room for kind um, of um replicating that in game yeah and you know there's a lot of other inaccuracies within minecraft so i don't oh, i don't yeah, really absolutely. think they're they're trying to go with real world accuracy that you know and a lot of people really don't care and there's some people that really just mm-hmm. don't know um because a lot of people don't know about bee farming or about bees yeah. entirely so they, they don't really care um yeah. but, but like no. look what they did with pandas i mean they added that whole like genetics kind of system into the pandas that yeah. kind of everyone forgets about and i forgot about to be honest until i someone may have mentioned it or i saw it in a video or something but they definitely kind of take that kind of thing into account and for a game that's also considered so like educational in certain aspects um i mean bees are a very important part of like the ecosystem i think that could be one of the most important um organisms within life itself um, yeah exactly because without bees pollinating um flowers and plants and all that um they they have a very um in they have a large impact on um oxygen production Mm. so as as we saw in in the the film movie (laughs) um so without bees there is the human population really can't survive. Um, so um, they're, they're pretty important. I don't think really if, if you want to um, showcase an organism like this and if, if Mo Yang is priding themselves on education, I really think they did themselves a disservice with this snapshot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're really doing bees justice in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I definitely think that, they're cool. Like I think adding the bees is a really cool thing to oh, have yeah, in the game. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. But like you said, I think they definitely could kind of there's a few changes yeah. that I think could definitely be I, reflected on. I just think the snapshot of what they did, I think it's just kind of I don't I don't want to say lazy, but if I may interject, kind of this I is just think. one snapshot of many to come. Yeah. Right. That, that's that's still the development. first one. Our like, speculation currently is invalid. Right. That that I mean, is true. A, a lot of, these can a be completely like changed by 1.15 coming out. They can yeah, be completely exactly. different. Even like uh, in a couple may, weeks. They we may different. have strong opinions about the bees and everything, mm. but still, you know. Yeah, but, you know, you're still definitely, this, you know, discussion, that's the whole point of snapshots is, you know, to start discussion. So I think this is definitely completely justified. Yeah, but um, yeah. definitely yeah. It's, as long as we're open to, you know, to change, which. Right. And I'm not condemning. definitely. Yeah. For what they're doing, you know, I'm just I'm just stating my opinion and how I feel about the snapshot. I'm not yeah. saying like I have said before, um, you know, we some people don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Some right. people yeah. do, and but we may have our scenario. strong opinions. However, at the same time, we should be mindful that oh, oh these yeah, people no, are just, very, very, very without very, a doubt. We just like, you know as as any average you know community goer of exist uh, existence well of existence sure but of minecraft you know we're gonna have definitely open to um kind of different options and just giving our two cents and definitely yep. mo yang has showed they're, they're definitely open to kind of feedback mm-hmm. and stuff and um pretty, pretty much to be blunt discussion. straightforward we have opinions we want to say them that's it you know and yeah you but know and mo Yang's what, definitely what taking that on board we shouldn't be so critical I, well, you know, I it, think we're simply justified. We're not being like, oh, we hate Mo Yang, we hate all the employees, right. no, they're terrible because they're doing all these things. We're just given. No, we're know, we're giving constructive. We're trying to make the game that we're playing better. Yeah, 
Um, it's just it's I'm, just feedback. It's not you know I'm not yeah. using this to dog on Mo Yang. I generally respect Mo Yang for what they're doing. I think they're a great game developer. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing amazing things with the game, um, and we're seeing what you know Minecraft getting more popular and popular as we go. I I think PewDiePie has something to do with that, unfortunately, but um that's <laughs> I think a, he's coming from the bandwagon to be honest oh, um yeah um <laughs> but topic Mo- for another day Mo Yang is doing such a fantastic job and yeah mm. you know y- you can't please everybody and if i if i had to rate this snapshot i'd give it a nine out of ten um it's amazing yeah. it's it's, it's, it's awesome. a nice snapshot. so i'm not trying to be over critical i'm not mm-hmm. you know enough with the b puns man <laughs> 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 I can't keep track of how many B puns people are throwing out. It's just you should see the game mode force over right now. Um, oh my lord! <laughs> Everyone um, has B nicknames. So this is definitely a fantastic um, addition to the game, and I'm yeah. really looking forward to what they're going to be adding in the future. Um, but I, 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 I do like to be. It, it, for me, it's B. I don't like to be critical, but <laughs> for me, it's. It, it, it's a way to get my thoughts out there, have a discussion. Yeah. Um, and that's what the podcasts are for at the end yeah, of the day. And I'm not being, I'm not trying to be over, comp, you know, okay, dude, you need to leave the okay. podcast. <laughs> okay. um, I was just going to, I, I was just going to chime <laughs> in and say, I think no matter what Mo Yang ends up doing with the snapshot and whether they kind of implement changes that we've talked about here or whether they just keep going with what they've got, I think it's going to be cool anyway. Yeah, yeah, it, it's going to be um, amazing. Regardless. One of the things uh, I thought of when bees were first added is uh, like in modded Minecraft, like back in 1.4 or whatever, bees were like a huge aspect to the game, like farming bees. I'm wondering mm. if they'll have something like that here or it's just going to be like kind of like turtles where it's like one little thing you can do yeah. that takes five minutes that's so. what i'm kind of thinking it's going to so be like I, I don't know because still don't even know the theme for this update yeah exactly yeah exactly I, they're, they're, they're going to be releasing the theme in, in modded but uh, oh, the, yeah, could be cool. they're gonna release it at minecon i'm pretty sure because yeah that, and, like, yes that's what i heard too uh, minecon live or whatever it's called yeah, yeah. um yeah which they're gonna be September, which um, yeah, I think they're going to be. I think this update is going to come with a um, complete biome. I think it's um, the spruce uh, biome. It's going to be completely. Yeah, something um, like that. Wait, no, we man. just got the spruce biome. Or the. Uh, 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 acacia? Ty- Wait, we just got the tiger biome? Yeah. Oh, all they did Apparently. was add campfires so, and foxes and berries. That's, I think yeah. it's going to be the savannah in this. Update. I think so. I think we'll just have to wait and find out. Uh, to yeah, be man, honest, I, um, I feel like I got gypped on one dot fourteen. Now I I didn't think they even. Yeah, just, they didn't. Yeah, yeah you they didn't do that. I was right. thinking there would be one. like all new trees, new landscape. You know, all of this I stuff. I think that much, be, but like, I um, thought there was going to be more than just what they showed off in the video at Minecon. But like I guess that's items. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm not really looking forward to the biome updates now because. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think in that retrospect, I think it'd be nice to think that they are going to do something bigger in this update but um yeah. i think that's definitely yeah. a topic for another day we're, we're coming up on what did, did someone just deflate vanilla or like <laughs> <laughs> did he just deflate himself <laughs> uh, i think we should <laughs> when we look at wrapping things up through the podcast we're coming up on just over 50 minutes now but um i just gotta ask real quick yeah if we're getting bees mm-hmm. Where are the bears? Yeah, yeah. We need bears. I, we're gonna get bears. That was a talk a long time ago. That was like what one point twelve, maybe? maybe. They should have had. They should have added other bears when they added polar bears. Well, that's what I thought they were gonna do. They're gonna have polar bears and panda bears and um, like black bears and brown bears. That's what I heard. Christmas. That's what I remember reading when they did those snapshots. But apparently not. Parent. Okay, I was trying to try to make a beer pun, but I couldn't quite land it. <laughs> Too many bee puns, man. Get the bees <laughs> right. in the brain. Shall we go over our um our fantastic patrons before we Absolutely. finish things up here? Go for it. Oh dear. On the note of patrons, just while I'm pulling up the page here, we're def- at the moment uh, behind the scenes. We're looking doing a lot of kind of work at um kind of getting a few more existence people around on Project Keystone and looking at doing kind of weekly-ish live streams between myself, Vanilla. And Sandman, so keep an eye on that, everyone. And um, for the meantime, 
thank you everyone including sandman thank you sandman you're welcome uh, the mundane sugarcaney tc midnight delta dragon pineapple underscore one two three ACG a thousand Kesos, thank you Kesos. I Galaxy ATM two 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 Lord of the Undead. I need help. <laughs> it gets me every time. Also known as MC Zombie Slayer back help in the day. On the way. <laughs> Waffle Stick, a Torbre, it's Purple J, Hick and Jake, Diamond Axolotl, and Duo gets wrecked. Thank you guys all so much for your ongoing support. Definitely a huge help. But yeah. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for listening. And uh, thank you to Brayden, Kyle Kaysaws, Sandman, Vanilla Raccoon, and I've been with Peachwise. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you, everyone, for listening in. Cool, peace. See you guys all later.